begin by saying Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, including those who are here, and a special Happy Mother's Day to my own mother, Sarah Hill. Thank you for joining us here at St. David's for this service of Holy Communion. If you have a Book of Common Prayer available, I encourage you to follow along in the service, and we'll be beginning on page 355. Also, in solidarity with all those who are not in a position to take communion, none of us will actually will consecrate the elements, but none of us here at the church will, will um, consume the elements. Instead, we'll say a prayer of spiritual communion, and at that time, I'll say a line and then pause, and I invite uh, folks who are watching to say a line. For spiritual communion. Just a quick note looking ahead. Uh, today at 11 o'clock we'll have, and every Sunday we'll have a Zoom Sunday school class. We also live stream morning prayer every Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And we have Bible studies and other events through the week. And so if you would like information on how to connect with us on any of those events, uh, please let me know. You can contact me, you can contact the church, or you can contact me by text or by email. And thank you again for joining us. Our service will begin in just a moment. If you have a hymnal at home, we're opening with number 518 in the hymnal, and we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs> We 
worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 We continue with the lesson.
to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. Oh, excuse me. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. For you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you have a hymn rule at home, the sequence here is number 487. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, the Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So in our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus announces to his apostles that they know the way to the place where he is going. Thomas responds, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus' answer to Thomas's pained question is the good news of this passage. But before we get to that good news, we should sit just for a moment with poor Thomas. Thomas is in a bad spot. His beloved Lord is about to get crucified. Thomas and everyone else associated with Jesus will be tainted by association and in real danger getting arrested themselves. Going forward, they will have to figure out what to do without the reassuring presence and leadership of Jesus. I've never been in nearly such a difficult spot as Thomas is here, but I can identify with Thomas's uncertainty about the way. Like him, I have had times when I did not know where I was going, and when I had no clear sense of my own way. On this Mother's Day, I think first about the birth of our eldest son. Carrie and I had been eager to get pregnant. When we got the good news, we had nine months to get ready. It was not enough. It wasn't nearly enough. I doubt any amount of time would have been enough. The night that Benjamin was born, we most definitely did not know our way forward. Carrie and I asked to have Benjamin in the hospital room with us. But every time he made the slightest sound, we leapt up convinced he was dying. There was no chance that we would sleep with this terrifying little person nearby. Well, in the hospital, that was okay. Eventually, we asked the nurses to take Benjamin away. But when we left the hospital a day or two later, there were no more helpful nurses. Carrie and I had to actually care for this child. Benjamin is now 23 years old, and his brother is 20. But raising them still feels very much like a work in progress. My father assures me that we haven't screwed them up too badly. At least, he always adds, not yet. But the period in my life that particularly comes to mind as I ponder Thomas's question about the way forward, Thomas's concern about not knowing the way, is my first year in college. I was a thousand miles from home, sharing a small suite with four strangers. We were a bohemian intellectual from Boston, a massive football player from Long Island, a slick ladies' man from Delaware, and a gruff intimidating Texan, and me. I felt totally out of my league. Our parents were a long way away. Our teachers did not care about our personal lives. The administration mostly left us alone. So the five of us began figuring out how to live together, more or less on our own. And by any civilized standard, it did not go well. A friend of mine from Georgia visited that fall. He spent the night with us. As I walked into our room, I warned him that it was a little messy. He assured me that it could not be worse than his own room, and he was wrong. 
After venturing into our bathroom, he announced that he would not be setting foot in our shower. On another occasion, my roommates and I were relaxing in our small living room with a few beers. Somehow we got it into our head that it would be fun to throw the empty bottles over our heads against the wall as hard as we could to see if we could break them. We did that for a while without thinking much about it, accumulating a good bit of broken glass in the process. That is in our room where we lived. When an absent roommate came in, he asked us what we were doing, and suddenly it occurred to us that our behavior may not have been a good plan. My personal low came in our second year. At some point, we had lots of old newspapers lying around, so I decided to burn them. But I am from Georgia, and I was fuzzy on the whole flu thing, so I stacked lots of paper in the fireplace and lit it. And the paper flamed impressively and put out a good bit of smoke, all of it in our room. The fire alarm went off. I called the police to ask them to turn off the alarm, and thinking I had done what I needed to do, I began to relax with the beer. The paper was still burning vigorously, and I was still drinking my beer when the firefighters showed up to my embarrassment. I made the front page of our college newspaper the next day. That was my only appearance in the paper in my four years in college. <laughs> well, as I look back at those years, I am grateful that I had a relatively safe environment in which to be remarkably foolish. And I am profoundly grateful for the wonderful and only slightly less foolish friends who were a part of it. But I had no idea what I was doing or where I was going. Like Thomas, I had no sense of my own way. And I picture Jesus and me having the conversation that Jesus has with Thomas in our gospel reading. Jesus says, well, you know the way. And I respond that I do not know the way. And Jesus starts to explain that actually I, I do, and then Jesus pauses and nods because I really did not know the way. But then, and this is the good news of our passage, Jesus says to me, as Jesus says to Thomas, as Jesus says to all of us, I, Jesus, am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. If you want to know your own way forward, all you have to do is get to know me a little better. I picture Jesus adding back in 1983, it is going to take you a while. But as you do your best to find your way, know that I am with you. I am with you in your filthy shower and during your stupid drinking games and when you set boneheaded fires. All you have to do is open your eyes and you will see me and you will see your way. I picture Jesus saying much the same thing to us right now. I still do boneheaded things. I still often don't have any idea what to do next, especially in this unprecedented situation I do not see a clear way forward. And I picture Jesus saying to me and to all of us, you still have a lot to learn, but I am still the way, and I am still with you, and you can't see exactly where you're headed, but don't worry too much about that, because we will take the next step together, and as long as you are with me, you are on the right way. One last word about my college friends. The Bohemian intellectual, now from New York City, got us together again last Sunday on Zoom. It was the first time that we were all together in, I would say, a few decades. And it was great to see them again. And in a minor miracle, we all turned out okay. The same is, us true, the same is true for us now, I think particularly about here at St. David's, but more generally about all of us. We will stumble along, and we will make mistakes, and we will get through it together with Christ's help. And looking back, when this is all behind us, we will be able to say that Christ was with us and that we were on the way the whole time, even when we didn't know it. And so on this day, I give thanks to Christ, who shows us the way and who is the way. 
And I pray that Christ will continue to guide us as we walk the way. And I say that in his name. Amen. Amen. Now we continue with the Nicene Creed, which is on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of the people. Thank you for the life of Robert, who died. 
King. Praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Pray for um, Dante and Mia's aunt who passed away this week, Tatiana, and the rest of her family who are now uh, praying that she has peace. For Robert, for Mona, for Ed. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their, their trust, trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you.
I know at least two, that's Virginia Mitula and Glenn McDonald. So we'll say a quick birthday prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also have a couple of anniversaries to celebrate. Dan and Linda Paquette and Dixie and Marcel Lousen. So again, we pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon those your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our service continues now with the Great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A, which begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us be a thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! And I invite you to join me in repeating after me the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people. At every altar of your church. At every altar of your church. Where the Holy Eucharist now being celebrated, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today, since I cannot receive you today, in the sacrament of your body and blood, in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you. May I live in you. And you in me. And you in me. In this life and in the life to come. In this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. We'll continue in just a moment with the post-communion. 
And now let us pray together the post-communion prayer on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. 